We're hoping we can uh, get to maybe some practical advice. Uh, Kira Hudson Banks, St. Louis University of Psychology professor, Dan Duncan from the National Council on um, Alcoholism and Drug Abuse, and Marion McCord from Chad's Coalition, which deals with uh, issues of uh, adolescent depression, suicide. You've got a personal story we want to ask you about in just a bit. But um, let me ask you this. I mean, a lot of people, me included, have had moody teenagers. There, there seems to be a lot of things, and maybe mo moody middle school students, and maybe kids with tantrums. And, and so the question, I think, is, as a parent, um, becomes what's normal behavior, that's OK, and what warning signs would begin to tell you that this isn't just normal behavior? Kara, can we start with you? Sure. I mean, I think that there's a way in which we have to also allow kids a spectrum of behaviors, right? They're moody adults as well, people that we work right. with, right? Um, but I think some risk factors to, to be aware of are where you're, when your child is really isolating themselves, right? When they have something that they love to do and they no longer have an interest in engaging in it, right? So that activity or that friend that, that you knew might spark their interest no longer does. Um, you should start to be concerned. Um, if they're sleeping too much, or if they're not sleeping enough, if their um, appetite is, is, is hyperactive, or they don't have one at all, right? Those are all um, signs of depression, right? Which is where we would start to see some serious uh, possible suicidal ideation. Yeah, Dan, you know, alcoholism and, and drug abuse, what you're dealing with, that to me can exist as its own disease, right. its own problem, maybe separate. I, I'm not sure where this fits in for us because we've been taught for a long time, well, addiction is a disease or alcoholism is a, a disease, but is it a mental health issue or is it a, a symptom of something or maybe it's all of those things? It can be either or both. Uh, sometimes we call it co-occurring disorders where the precursor to alcohol and drug use is really depression, anxiety, something along those lines, a personality disorder. Uh, for that youth, when they discover or they experiment with something like alcohol or marijuana, it may do something different for them than it does the next kid. And uh, it kind it, of so it can set something off. Oh yeah, or absolutely. it could be a, a they're self-medicating right. essentially uh, mm -hmm. because it's making them feel better when there's a deficit and there's something that they're trying to. There's a reason they're trying to feel better. Uh, as a result, they will they will continue using and perhaps use more and more frequently than the next kid, and that can parlay right into an addiction over time. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Marion, you're dealing with, um, you dealt with this in your own family, with your own son, and now you're helping other people deal with it. But for me, it's the scariest story because you were not unaware of what was going on with Chad, for whom this, this uh, organization is named. You were aware. Tell us a little bit about what you went through and then, and then how you're trying to share this with other people. Chad was one of those cream of the crop students. He just seemingly had it all. And ironically, I was a pediatric nurse. I was in the business of saving children's lives. I had no idea that he was fighting depression until it was his senior year after a long phone conversation with his girlfriend. He told her on the phone that he wanted to take his life. And she did exactly what she was supposed to do and called us and Chad talked to us and I'm a pediatric nurse. And I said, Chad, sounds like he's suffering from depression. That was the beginning of the journey for us, and it was for six months that you trialed him on uh, 17 different medications. He went through ECT. Chad was unusual in that he was also 100% uh, compliant with his treatment. He did not abuse drugs and alcohol, and he really wanted to get better. But he had a treatment-resistant depression. So it was six months after he told us that he wanted to take his life, that he did take his life. It was two weeks after he got his Eagle Award, and four months before, four, I'm sorry, four weeks before graduating with high honors. And this, this cuts across again, I know we've made this point when we've talked about these issues before, but these problems in the very long, a vast array of problems cut across all groups, racial, ethnic, socioeconomic. They do. Uh, you find it all throughout society, <coughs> and, and I think sometimes a natural tendency for some families, parents is to assume it's just a phase, whatever they're seeing, and that this will pass. Um, and the stigma comes into play a little bit there, I think, in terms of nobody wants to have that necessarily going on in their family. Uh, but it's very important to do what uh, Marion did, which is to respond uh, and, and, and hopefully have a better outcome. Because the earlier the response, the earlier their intervention, generally speaking, uh, the better the reception uh, for the child. 
And, and I really think, I'm so sorry to, for your loss, but I'm so uh, inspired that you're willing to reach and help others because it's important that people, like you said, it, it knows, no, knows no boundaries in a sense that I think people often, and parents, don't want to say, or want to say, it couldn't happen to my child because they are a, a student and because they're involved in so many extracurriculars, yeah. and so, that's not a guarantee that they won't suffer from a mental illness. So where are the barriers? I mean, where, where, what are the challenges here? I mean, okay, I, I get it if, if somebody's choosing to ignore it, but I think we've improved the stigma. I mm -hmm. think you've shown over the years, to some extent, you're maybe not agreeing. But I think there's a greater awareness. But the barriers, whether it's a barrier personally for you or in the things that you're seeing, what's, what's preventing things from working? Well, historically, I mean, one of the barriers that we've had was a lack of services, um, insurance, reimbursement, whether they would pay for it or not, whether you can get the help. That is getting better. In, in the county, we were fortunate that we passed the Children's Service Fund a few years ago, and now lots of money is starting to flow into much needed services that are making a difference and will continue to make a difference, so we're, we're fortunate. Not all areas have that, um, but we have to, we do have to confront those issues in terms of available services for kids when they need them, and, and the quicker that we can connect them to what they need, get a diagnosis if necessary, I mean, that's really critical and, and very important. Mm -hmm. Marion, do you find stigma to still I, be, be there? Absolutely, yeah. I think that is a huge part. I mean, kids want to be like other kids, and so many of our youth are masters of disguise. Mm -hmm. We can talk about what the symptoms are, but they will do their best to hide them because they just want to be Absolutely. like their peers. And I think, to be honest, there are adults who, who are not honest about the symptoms they have as well, right? So we have in our society this kind of rugged individualism. I can do it, right, and I can do it by myself. And I think that gets in our way as a society. And so if kids are seeing that in the adults and then mirroring it, it looks weak to say that you need help. Dan, best piece of advice you can give somebody who thinks there might be an issue in their family? Um, kind of like I was just saying, take action soon. Uh, don't wait. Don't assume that it's going to go away on its own. Uh, react. Get some help. Get some professional help. Reach out. Um, and and do, it, do it as soon as, you, as your gut tells you, you know, this is persistent. We're seeing accumulation of symptoms here, not one thing or two, uh, and it's getting worse. Do not wait reach out, get help. And we've made the point before, the resources to, to a great extent are out there and, and sometimes it's just getting people connected to what's already available to them as opposed to things that are not there. Uh